Good morning. It is looking like my grandson is the only young person here today, and he has told me he wants to opt out of the time with children. And you know, he gets to listen to me all the time, so I'm okay with that. <laughs> Uh, so, the peace of Christ be with each of you. Please turn to those around you and share Christ's peace. You all beat me this time. Right. I want to welcome all of you this morning. It's so good to be here and I'm sort of, you know, the afternoons get pretty hot, but I'm sort of going... Yes, I can feel the fall, <laughs> the cool evenings, and so it's really nice. Um, are there announcements that need to be made? Marilyn? I'll put this back on. I'm trying to drink coffee, too. Um, I've kind of taken over the uh, coffee preparation and whatever on Sunday morning. We would love to have people sign up, and there's a sign-up sheet on the back counter. Uh, it requires you to be here around 9, 9, 10, and fixing the coffee, setting up the table in the back, and then cleaning up afterwards. We'd love to have anybody ask questions if you want to know anything about it. Uh, it's a pretty simple process, so please consider volunteering. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Autumn is in the air, as uh, Kathy mentioned. Uh, we can see the aspens. We can also hear the construction next door and seem to be here. Uh, uh, if you uh, would consider joining our capital campaign to resurface the exterior of both the church and the dance, we'd be grateful. We are almost there. We have a little less than $25,000 left to go. Thank you. Yes, morning. Uh, today at 4 o'clock, would be a memorial concert for an extraordinary pianist who has played here many times. And he's co-founder of the Chamber Music Festival 46 years ago, and that's Robin Sutherland, former uh, principal pianist for the San Francisco Symphony. Today we'll have a, um, a memorial for him, and you're welcome to free, and then a uh, reception afterwards. All right. Here for sure. Thank you. Other announcements? Then let us prepare to worship. Bob? This morning are from one of my favorite poets, Mary Oliver. It's titled, When Did It Happen? Remembering? Remembering. When did it happen? 
It was a long time ago. Where did it happen? It was far away. No tell. Where did it happen? In my heart. What is your heart doing now? Remembering. Remembering. As we continue on our journey here at Christ Church and confident in our we are confident in our expectations. So will you join me in the call to worship that's printed in your bulletin? Welcome travelers to the journey of faith. Come and continue the quest acting out your faith, living life to the fullest. We will let our spirits soar like eagles, stretching ourselves to the limit, drinking in the world's color, absorbing its light and texture, inhaling its fragrance, dancing to the music. This is the way we worship God. Will you pray with me? God of the journey, we thank you that you walk with us every day. We accept each new day, its joys and sorrows as gift. We gain courage to meet the challenge of every day, choosing life as we move through time. In your steadfast forever love, May we find the healing to love ourselves and to love one another. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn is the Spirit Open My Heart. It's the insert in your bulletin. Thank you. 
This morning and last week, my sermons have been a little bit different as we're preparing and talking about the congregation's part of what you're doing while Pat and Debbie are away. So um, we're repeating just a little bit today and then going on. So will you pray with me as we begin? Spirit of life, come and meet us here today. Take away all that distracts us and fill us with your love and your grace. Amen. You may, did I leave out? I did. Reading. Okay, we're going to back up just a hair. It's okay to pray, though. I don't mind that. That will take that. So the readings for today. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> they may sound familiar, but Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And the second one, his mother treasured all these things in her heart.
will continue. So now I can say the first line of my sermon. <laughs> you may have recognized those readings this morning. So now that you've heard them. The first one takes place right after the shepherds and the angels have visited the place where Jesus was born. And Mary was having just given birth, taking it all in and placing those things in her heart. The second one, the second reading, is a few years later, some say 12 years later, when Jesus and his parents were traveling and Jesus left them, his parents thought he was still with the group of folks and they didn't even realize that Jesus was not with them until after they'd gotten home and he like didn't show up that night. And he's like, so he's been gone this whole time? So they go back and they find him in the temple and they are astounded when they hear their own son speaking. But they were also just a little bit miffed, as any parent would be. But once again, that passage ends with Mary taking all those things in and treasuring them in her heart. And as I thought about that, I thought, this is how memories are for us. We sort of store them in our heart memory banks, and we store them in our mind memory banks also. Because there is something about whatever it is that has happened that feels so special, so important, that we need to remember them here and we need to remember them here. So we think about both of those things. So last week when we began talking about the project for this congregation and its effects on us personally and as a congregation, that I thought they have a profound impact on us, on our hearts, what we feel, and on our minds, what we think. So I went through the grant application and I looked at it week by week where Debbie and Pat were and what they were going to be doing and I sort of mapped out for us that we're going to try to just kind of move along in tandem with them. And so last week, they were in the process of remembering their baptism. And this week, they are remembering their call. And that's the reason Pat wanted to go to Spain, was to visit the first place where he really felt the call to ministry. So I wanted you to think about not only your baptism and your call, but those special things that you hold in your heart and you hold in your mind. And so now, sort of in the middle of my sermon, I'm going to ask Kelly and Ellie if they would come up because they are helping in this whole process. So y'all come on up. Um, and they're going to explain to you how we're going to put all this together and how we're going to share it. I brought something to read because I'm no good extemporaneously. Well, I do too. See, it's all right here. <laughs> I'm Kelly Jemison, and I've been a member of this parish not as long as I've been coming to this church, but we've been in Telluride since 1993. Anyway, 20 years ago, I engaged in a four-year program designed by the Episcopal Church to nurture a richer spiritual life. 
In one of the first meetings, we were asked, are you a God person, a Jesus person, or a Holy Spirit person? At the time, my faith was uncharted territory, but I knew that I had never said or thought the words, thank you, Jesus, or God is good. That wasn't how I rolled. But I did wonder what it was inside me that caused a beautiful sunset to, to bring tears to my eyes while my dog sitting beside me and seeing the same thing evidently didn't give a flip. <laughs> um, this program that I was in required that we write a spiritual autobiography each year. Writing is daunting for me. I get hives thinking about the yearly Christmas letter. I needed a vehicle, a trope, something familiar to carry me across this unfamiliar terrain of a spiritual autobiography. A talent, a gift, a relationship that anchored or defined me. But who was me? So the first year's autobiography was a cop-out of sorts. I explored my begattings, my origins, the people who raised me up, and, the re and my relationships with them. Strangely, memories bubbled up, feelings, questions, impressions that I had formed as a child and never before questioned. They created a gateway to something deeper. Suddenly, this story, my story, was begging to be recorded. The second year's spiritual autobiography was easy to access. I chose as my trope a gift or a talent that wound its way through my years. I chose stitching. It was intentional, creative, a gift to connect me and the people in my life in both concrete and mysterious ways. Ways that sometimes transformed the ordinary into something extraordinary. The mystery was not obvious at first. It was years before some of the magic surfaced. But once I caught a glimpse of it, once I became aware of the possibilities, I could see it working everywhere. This mystery wasn't something that I talked about. It wasn't the topic of dinner conversations, chats during a hike, annual Christmas card letters, because it had no words yet. It was locked inside and accessible. Your story is begging to be recorded too. You may already be in touch with that mystery that is working in your life, and your words may come effortlessly, or like me, you yet may be searching for your words. But it's a lovely gift to give yourself and your children. The words you find will live beyond you. They will guide those who follow you. They will be the answers to the inevitable utterance I so wish my relative was still alive. I have so many questions I never thought to ask them. I'm Ellie Hansen. Uh, we've split time here. We live in Mountain Village and split time in Dallas. Um, so I'm the logistics part. <laughs> so you've just heard uh, Kelly share her experience of writing about her spiritual journey and we'd like to invite you to embark on that journey as well whether you choose to do that in a written format or whether you'd like to and be willing to share it with each other and with Pat that's what we're, we're trying to facilitate we're going to try and break that down into some bite-sized pieces so it's not so daunting Kelly's was a four-year journey ours is going to be much much shorter <laughs> um, we are First, we're going to send you all, a shadow is the company name, um, 
we're going to Um, first, we're going to be emailing you a survey that you can do with it what you wish, whether it's to write out and answer those questions as thoroughly or as briefly as you wish. Um, second option is for you to actually give a written submittal to Kelly, and we're going to be compiling these and um, sharing them with Pat as, as he journeys, as, but specifically at the end, we'll compile all of them and share them together. So the second option is for you to give a written submittal and we'll have you email those to Kelly Jensen. The next option is for you to create a short selfie and send it to me. And we'll get those it compiled and you can share anything from a moment in your spiritual journey to, um, as uh, Kathy mentioned, whether it was about a, a specific event, a baptism, a calling, a moment that um, you recognize this thing of the mystery God, whoever it is that you, you call upon. Um, how is that to share that moment with us? And then last option would be if you would like, if it would be helpful to have a Zoom session with me um, and we can have a brief conversation and I'll record it and I'll compile it for you, um, I'd welcome that. I too have... Uh, had the experience of doing this in years past, and it was th through a video. And what was created from that is a real sense of community. And as we got to hear from each other and about moments along our journey, it created such a depth of connection. And so we're, whether you're here part-time or full-time, or you just visit us regularly, uh, we really want to, our Christchurch community to come together maybe in a new way. Um, as as Pat is going into this new area of depth in his walk, we are inviting you to do the same in yours. Um, so, Bite Size Pieces, you're gonna get an email next week, and that email will contain that survey I set, our questionnaire that I mentioned, and we'll just start there, and it'll have all the contact details, and if you'd like to participate with us in some other way, we would really welcome that. Thanks. Thank you. You come with me now. Good boy. Does that sound doable for all of you? Yes. Yes. And um, the vision is of sharing this with Pat can be. Uh, we may share snippets of folks as we get them. Uh, in worship, and then we will compile it all. And the Sunday that Pat comes back, which is also my last Sunday, is going to be sort of a reflection of Pat's last Sunday and my first Sunday. So we will be, uh, we light my candle that's up here now. We will be lighting Pat's candle that Sunday and extinguishing my candle because that's my last Sunday with you. And I believe there's a luncheon that day. And sometime during the luncheon, we hope to share this whole piece of your journey while Pat and Debbie were gone because I feel quite certain in the coming weeks through his sermons, Pat will be sharing with you his whole journey. So I think it's just going to be a wonderful way to share. So that's our hope for all of this. So I want to end. Sometimes for me, when I am needing to reflect, sometimes it's scripture. Sometimes, and quite often, it's music. And sometimes it's poetry. And I happen to find what I believe is one of the most perfect poems for what we're doing, so I want to end with that today. It is a poem by Ganila Norris. I don't know if you've heard of her. And it's called Sharing Silence. Within each of us, there is a silence. 
a silence as vast as the universe. We are afraid of it and long for it. When we experience that silence, we remember who we are. <clears throat> Creature of the stars, created. From the cooling of this planet, created. From dust and gas, created. From the elements, created. From time and space, created from silence. Silence is the source of all that exists. The unfathomable silence where vibration began, the first oscillation, the first word, from which life emerged. Silence is our deepest nature, our home, our common ground, our peace. Silence reveals, silence heals. Silence is where God dwells. We yearn to be there. We yearn to share it. And yet in our present culture, silence is something like an endangered species, an endangered fundamental. The experience of silence is now so rare that we must guard it and treasure it. This is especially true for share silence. Sharing silence with others is a political act. Silence brings us back to basic, basics, to our senses, to our selves. It locates us. Without that return, we can go so far away from our true natures that we end up quite literally beside ourselves. We live blindly and act thoughtlessly. We endanger the delicate balance which sustains our lives, our communities, and our planet. I believe that each of us can make a tremendous difference. Politicians and visionaries will not return us to the sacredness of life. That will be done by ordinary men and women who gather neighbors and friends together and say, Remember to breathe. Remember to feel. Remember to care. Remember life. Let us do this together for ourselves and our children and our children's children. May it be so. One of the main things that we do together as a community is we share our joys and we share our concerns. So do you have those you wish to share this day? Yes, Jenny. You need to remember those lost on 9-11 and the Yes, thank you. And let us remember all those who are still cleaning up after Hurricane, uh, whether they're on the southern coast or the east coast or somewhere in between. And all those who are still fighting fires and are still losing their homes and those who have. And 
may I say that the fires are not just here in the United States, they are around the world. And then also, this time of pandemic, um, to remember those who have lost loved ones, those who are ill, and those who are still so diligently caring for those who are ill. May they have just a ray of sunshine and hope. <laughs> so let us pray for that for them. Do you have others you wish to share? You are invited to write your joys or concerns down on the little stickies that are in your bulletin. And when you come forward, if you want to place them up here on the table, please remember to do so. Will you pray with me? Holy One, our lives are a journey, and the road does go on forever. The road that began with our birth, winding its way through meadows and mountains and rivers and canyons and deserts. We are thankful for the bread that sustains us, for the guides who lead us on our journey. And we pray for those whose journey ends moments after it appears it has just begun. We pray for those who do not have the strength to travel on and for those whose path winds back up upon itself, spiraling through poverty, pain, prison of soul, mind, or body. We pray for those whose path coils with malice until all joy, power, and life itself are crushed out. In the landscape of your abounding love, there are paths leading into tomorrows yet undreamed. May there be days ahead when all your children shall walk upon a green and fruitful earth, unafraid of war, having no want, untroubled by pain, loneliness, selfishness, or uselessness. Help us to shape such a world for them. Let our paths not be narrow and self-absorbed. Let us build broad highways where all walk together in beauty, tending the gardens along the way. And as we journey through pleasure and pain, commitment and betrayal, keep us mindful that we do not journey alone. You are presence in our midst. You walk beside us and dance ahead of us into the future. Deliver us from the weight of grudges and regrets. We yearn to break free from all that and come running into your open arms, spread wide with mercy and love. So hear us now as we pray together saying, our Mother, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will you stand and join me as we receive our morning offering? Divine love flowing through me blesses and increases all that I give and all that I receive. Amen.
So sometimes that fits with Presbyterians, and, but it's going to fit with you guys because I just know you. You're going to love it. So I'm going to ask Bob to just play through it one time. Okay. Um, just their parts. Yeah. Um, most of the notes go with the syllables, but at the very end, there's a, there, um, several notes are... On, on the word want. Or on one syllable. Yeah. So basically it's.
Got it? You got it. It's very repetitious. Rock out, okay? <laughs> All right, we're ready, Bob. Huh? church there's going to be a quick session meeting and Warner where's the best best place for that is it here downstairs Probably downstairs here. oh in here in here right up here uh, we have two folks who are wanting to join us today it's Griffith Harsh and Meg Whitman so we are so glad what a joy for me to get to do this so uh, that's a pretty good thing, isn't it? Yeah, I see this going on. Awesome. So will you join me in the benediction? Now may the peace of God, even that peace that passes all understanding, abide with us in every season, leading us to greater freedom, fullness, and wholeness. walks with you every step of the way. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Go in peace. And session come up here.